Record. I can edit later. All right. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Okay. Uh, so I'm really excited to have Tom Swales. He's a physical therapist, athletic therapist, strength and conditioning coach here, uh, coming to Williston for a special movement and kettlebell workshop. So Tom, can you tell us a little bit about your your education history? Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Jen. Um, so started out as a personal trainer, like most of us do. Uh, training myself, playing soccer, and then uh, went down to the States on a soccer scholarship. Did my undergrad in athletic training down in Iowa. And then worked at gyms and other fitness facilities for a couple of years. Then got my master's in physiotherapy at Western of Ontario. Worked with the Canadian ski team for a couple of years, the Olympic ski team. Got some good experience there and then came back home, met my wife, came back home and uh, worked for a good friend and mentor, Doug Freer, for many years, learned lots of stuff and then went out on my own. We started our own clinic and facility and developed our own system from that. So yeah, just kind of pulled from athletic training, physiotherapy, personal training, strength conditioning, natural movement, kettlebell. So just bringing in a lot of different systems to better rehabilitation, higher performance, as well as continuing to upgrade and uh, work with my athletes so that they can perform at the best of their abilities. So that's kind of in a nutshell in 30 seconds. <laughs> um, okay, so, you, um, so you're going to be coming here to train um, other personal trainers or maybe just general population. Yep. Um, can you give us a, a description of, of what you'll be covering? Yeah, so the, uh, the Movement Kettlebell Workshop is it's a two-day workshop that is consisting of ground-based mobility. Uh, we're going to use some mindfulness techniques, relaxation, tension techniques to kind of feel where parts of the body are, are holding tension, how to release tension to allow movement to happen. We're going to go over some breathing techniques on um, how to downregulate, relax the body when we're in stressful situations because some of the skills that you're going to learn are going to be very different and can put the nervous system into this state of alarm like it's going to die and we stop breathing, we create excessive tension, we waste energy. So um, breathing is going to be a big component especially on day one we're going to learn how to do that. Just like our development we learn from the ground up. So learning how to transition, activating core, mobilizing our spine, working on slings, and then transitioning into kneeling, standing, working on balance. We'll be using balance beams and then jumping techniques. Second day will be more barefoot running, climbing, lifting and carrying. But then also amalgamating uh, the, the, all the kettlebell techniques, uh, at least the, the six main lifts that are considered. So you got your Turkish get up, your squat, and your kettlebell swing and progressions and regressions for that and then day two will be more your 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 swing your snatch or sorry your clean your snatch and your overhead press but we're going to be lifting awkward objects we're going to be climbing on bars i'm going to show you different um, energy efficiency techniques on how to move more effectively the one thing that I'll bring to the group is if clients are having difficulty with any of these skill sets, they are completely uh, scalable. So you're always going to have a regression or a progression from one of the entry points. And through the course in the manual, you can have a client where you can start them at one point that you think they might be successful at. And if they do really well there, you can just kind of move through the workshop or move through the manual, just like in the workshop, to continue their progression safely and give them different skill sets. If they're not doing so well, they're struggling, then you can regress them. So it's really a, um, I don't want to say I'm holding your hand to show somebody how to move effectively, but it is, uh, it, the way it's set up, it, it is a safe progression to improve people's body awareness improve their overall mobility, their athleticism. And then on a side note, when people start to move really well and they don't get injured and they're not bored, then they're more motivated to want to do more fitness. And then if their goal is to lose weight or gain muscle, then that's going to happen later. It almost becomes a side effect. But we're going to learn how to be human athletes and durable athletes first before we look at performance and burning calories and really looking good. Those are really side effects of a good system of durability and movement quality. Right. That kind of went into my next question, I guess. So if trainers are coming to this workshop, what would be just 
in a quick nutshell, the key things that they would be able to take away, deliver to their clients. So they will have a, a large, as I'm writing the manual, it's going to be rather long and maybe winded, but I try to make it as detailed as possible. Um, they will have the knowledge and the confidence to teach those six main lifts. They will have the confidence to teach the, the 10 principles or the 10 key movement uh, qual skills that I'm going to teach along that with progression. So they'll be able to walk away on Monday and start teaching their clients these, these skills. And uh, again, if somebody's not comfortable, they don't look good doing a kettlebell swing because their breathing's off, they're not packing their shoulders, then we regress it to make sure they can deadlift. And if they can't deadlift, we're going to put a dowel on their back and we might stand them in front of a wall and you're going to do a hip hinge. And if you suck at that, then we're going to go down to the floor and work on some spinal positioning and just some breathing exercises to make sure that people can safely keep their spine locked up so they're not going to swing into a disc or irritate their back or tweak a hamstring. So they're going to have a, a really nice laid out set of, of skills, progressions, and regressions that they can very easily teach and explain to clients on day one. And it looks like you're saying too, they, this could be for any type of client. Any type of client. Yep. I have, we have clients at our facility. We have uh, 75 year old ladies deadlifting hundred pound kettlebells. No problem. They're all pumped. They're like, I did seven deadlifts today at hundred pounds. That's sweet. And we got them walking on balance beams. And if you look at our older population, the biggest fear for the older population are falls. Because if they fall and they break a hip, it becomes a real health hazard for them. Um, it, 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 for some of them, it's potential for death because of complications and, and healing rates. It, but people think that because, well, they, they lose their balance because they get old. I'm like, no, that's not the fact at all. It's just you stop challenging those systems, so you lose the confidence and the skill to make adjustments if you do lose your balance. So the whole adage is, oh, well, I'm getting old. And I'm losing my balance and I'm losing my hearing. I'm like, mm, I just, I don't buy that. It's just you stop practicing. So, and with kids, kids respond to the natural movement system really, really well. So kids are coming in and they, you watch them. They're going through growth spurts. They're playing all kind. Of, they're playing one sport through the whole season. They can't touch their toes. Their hamstrings are all wound up. They, they're just horrible movers. But you get them back on the floor and you start teaching them how to roll across the floor. You start teaching them how to crawl again. You put them on a balance beam and get them to lunge. I don't have to put bands on them. I don't have to give them a dowel because if you put them on a balance beam and they fall off, well, they know they made a mistake because the beam told them that they made a mistake. So just like you, know, you and I have young kids, do we sit there and coach our little babies how to move? No. We put them in an environment. We let them make mistakes safely and they learn from that. So... Mm -hmm. To, to coach somebody through movement, you really, it can be effective to a degree, but they have to feel it because that's how the motor system learns. And in order to feel it, you have to either encourage them, give them sensations. You can tap muscles. You can kind of poke things. You can put a stick on their back, or you can just put them in an environment where they can learn to make mistakes and figure it out. So that's essentially a lot of the uh, techniques that we're going to go over that uh, clients like it because they can feel things. Coaches like it because they don't get laryngitis. So <laughs> uh, it, saves, it saves a lot of frustration and a lot of voices. But once you understand and can cue them just a little bit, because the, the most effective coaches just, they talk very little. They give one or two little instructions. They don't sit mm -hmm. there and coach, okay, I'm going to squeeze your glutes and set your shoulders and watch your breathing and put your tongue on the roof of your mouth. And it just gets, it gets too much. But if you can just give them one thing and put them in the environment, that's going to be the most effective. And that's one of the skills that the coaches coming in will learn how to do is actually talk less. That's great. And then yeah. we could all use that. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> um, okay. What about somebody who's not a, a trainer mm -hmm. um, and they just want to come in and learn what would they, what do you think they would get out of it? Perfect. They're just going to have a subset of skills and they will have a, a repertoire of exercises and progressions so they don't get bored. And if they really want to learn a clean or a snatch, they'll have the progressions and set ranges to kind of safely do it. Uh, they will use and they will be more creative with you know natural movement to uh, look at everything. A kid's playground, you're like, I want to climb that. 
oh, there's a sidewalk or there's a curb. I'm going to balance on that. It'll just open up people's eyes to look at everything as more play. And when you can look at exercises more of a play, then you're going to be more prone to do it because it doesn't seem like work anymore. And you, you, it just makes it more enjoyable to transport them. So the, the people coming in, you can have zero, zero skill with any of these things. And that is okay because we were all, we're all subject to the same laws of gravity and the same contextual environments. So we can scale, we can make things a little bit more challenging or a little less challenging so that they can be successful. And once they start to become successful, they have the confidence to continue to want to progress through the skills or the lifts that they're going to learn in the workshop. All right. I think uh, one more question. Just uh, what would they expect from the, the weekend? So if you can just describe the layout of the weekend, sure. um, you know, how taxing it might be on the body, what yep. they need to bring with them, that sort of thing. So uh, day one, it's going to be, we'll go over safety rules just to make sure, um, you know, people are aware of their environment. They know their limitations. You know, we're, we're leaving egos at the door. I don't care how much you lift. I want you to lift it well. And I don't want you to, and I don't want you to not get hurt. So we'll go over some safety rules. Um, the first probably 30 minutes to an hour is all going to be ground-based breathing, tension, relaxation drills, uh, transitions, rocking, rolling, stimulating the nervous system, mobilizing the hips, mobilizing the, throat, the shoulders, thoracic spine. So it's going to be a lot of mobility and prep work. And that's great stuff that you can use as part of your warm-up for anybody. Or you can use it as, I, I want to use it as a light day for workout. I'm just going to stay on the ground and mobilize and just move, crawl around, do some groundwork. From there, we're going to work up into balancing work and then some walking per, you know, perception drills. Uh, we will work on jumping and landing, but more the landing emphasis on day one. And then the lifts, the primary lifts that we're going to go over is the Turkish getup, which is a, I break it down to seven positions from the ground up and you can use it as a part of a screen. And I'll explain how the military, the Russian military used to use that. But um, I find it's, it's a nice movement with load that you're moving your body around to screen out weakness on one side or the other, or maybe some uh, mobility restrictions in the hips or the shoulders. So we'll start with that as a kind of our first loaded transition from laying to standing in reverse, just to kind of clear people out. Squatting techniques, and then uh, kettlebell swing deck techniques, which end up becoming more uh, deadlift, making sure people have a good deadlift. We'll go over some loaded mobility, so using the single leg deadlift, using some loads, and unwinding hamstrings, activating core a little bit. It's some little adage that I've uh, kind of been playing with with clients and, and athletes. So that's kind of the first day. The second day is going to be more your barefoot running. We're going to be reviewing a lot of the groundwork. We we'll probably add a little bit more loaded mobility the second day. But uh, the second day is going to be more your barefoot running, your climbing, your jumping, your carrying into your kettlebell work, which will be more your cleans, your swing, or your, your snatch, and your clean and press. So we are transitioning from day one into like babies, starting on the ground, learning, kind of feeling out the environment, learning what our bodies can do, into balancing and standing positions with some lifts, and then the second day is going to be more dynamics and ballistics. So you can see how day one and day two will play off one another is it's almost like we're, day one we're going to all be going to be reborn as kind of like these little human athletes and then we're going to learn to be more specialized um, ballistic athletes on day two okay but can you tell me what's your special superpower as a trainer to get one word what makes you oh, a man. super trainer super therapist super therapist super trainer um i think it might be that is a good question. Caught me off guard, did you? <laughs> you bum. Um, I think I'm just, I think I'm pretty proficient at just watching somebody move and kind of quickly figuring out what the problem is. Uh, just from years of feeling things out myself, uh, having my own injuries, watching my clients, just making clinical prediction rules and, and uh, linkages between, okay, when I see this person and they have a single leg balance and they're rotating, most likely it's this, this, and this that are off. And nine times out of 10, I'm usually right. Sometimes I'm off. Um, but it, I think I'm pretty quick at figuring out just watching somebody lift or move how I can troubleshoot them really quickly. 
Um, and then just getting them to feel and communicate through their body how to really dial that up without using too many words. I think that's, I think, I don't know. Pretty good superpower to be that quick to do that. Yeah. Um, okay. Can you tell us how we can stay or, or follow you or get more information? I yeah. know you've got some great posts on Instagram. Yep. Um, yeah. It's just a way to get to us to know you a little bit better. Perfect. Yeah. So my Instagram is Tom Swales 13. Um, the, my YouTube channel is also Tom Swales 13. Uh, so I'll link up any long video or any of the little short videos on Instagram. I always put the long videos on YouTube so you can get the full description. Um, Facebook is Thomas James Swales. And my company is Concept of Movement. You can go to conceptofmovement.com. My personal website for a lot of the education is tomswales.com. So you can get workshops, courses, my registration for this course or any future courses or workshops. Uh, you can go there and get products and you can get uh, education. And I'll usually post some blog stuff up there as well. So, yeah. But uh, and- this one is – sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say we're so happy to have you come here to Williston because for a lot of good training, we've got to travel outside to some major cities. So right. uh, to have somebody like you come in and do the workshop for us here and, and get some CEUs, this is a pretty awesome. Perfect. Um, yeah. Pretty I, awesome. I get, to see, uh, I get to see Williston. Sounds exciting. So, yeah, uh, so the, the workshop is September 15th, 16th at Williston yep. Park. At um, Wilson Area Recreation Center. Yep. So Wilson Parks and Recreation. Yep. Um, if you're you live in Wilson, you know where it is. <laughs> yeah. If you're in the area for the weekend or close to it, come on by. Um, oh, and uh, for those of you who have certifications, uh, I am in the process of going through the NSCA for CSCSs, ACE. So I'm going to my my I'm going to get the the manual done and all the the registration, or not the registration, the application uh, to get this approved for CEUs, for the individuals who need to get CEUs. Great. Awesome. Yep. Thank you so much for yeah, that. No yep. We're excited to have you. Awesome. All righty. So, uh, yeah, I will see everybody on the 15th, and it'll be fun. Rain or shine. If it's rain, suck it up. Wear your raincoats. <laughs> no raincoats. Skins only. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're good. Yeah. All right, Jenny. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Thanks, Tom. Take care. Bye. Bye.